Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and this is the second part of pr probably a two-part video series uh, looking at the real-world example of homelessness in the state of California and understanding what forces are behind the housing shortage within that state that has kept rental prices so high and inaccessible uh, to low-income uh, families and individuals and so on. In the previous video, I highlighted this Wikipedia page that um, provides insight quickly, some quick insight about the state where it says about 24% of the total, total homeless population in the US is within the state of California. One out of four homeless individuals in the United States are in California. And this is attributed to uh, an increasing housing shortage where the quantity of demand far, ex far out exceeds the quantity of supply. It's, a, it's a estimated uh, in 2015, I guess, homeless people number about 135,000. That number is just growing. Uh, and then 2021, it seems like it's been estimated 161,000. Uh, could be underestimated, um, but it's a significant problem as you can imagine in that particular state. It's, a, it's essentially a, a social crisis within that state. And if you were to do further research, you might uh, also find that there are homeless students in university that are not able to afford uh, housing in or around the university that they're studying at. It says here, in a state marked by inequality, that being California, and staggering housing prices, nearly 20% of community college students report experiencing homelessness, where many of them are opting to live in their cars. Now, this is occurring in the wealthiest nation on planet Earth, and we can contrast that with a country like Sweden. Here in the Euro Com European Commission website provides information for students in Sweden and what they're entitled to. And a Swedish citizen is entitled to um, a study allowance of 1,250 Swedish krona per month, which is around 100 US dollars per month provided by the Swedish government to their citizens that are studying. This Wikipedia page kind of sums up some of these aspects about Sweden. And it states here that uh, Swedish universities charge no tuition fees. So essentially, Swedish universities are public good, public education service that's accessible to all income levels within the population. And if students were to take on loans, the uh, interest rates in this year, 2018, was very, very low, 0.13. And those loans were typically taken out to cover uh, living expenses. No income tax is paid on student grants and student loans. Uh, and then it just highlights here, students must meet basic requirements to receive this um, and so on. But here you can see that Sweden has made the choice to invest in their human capital, invest in their labor, provide them access to quality education, and that investment will be a return to the national economy as those that study enter the labor force and contribute to the macro economy. So that's kind of a supply-side interventionist policy of investing in human capital through education, public education, as a long-run investment in improving the labor skills and productivity of their population. So let's go back to understanding what's happening in California. And in the previous video, we used this model to begin to understand what's happening. Graph A is the market for hotels in California. Graph B is the market for Airbnb in California, and Airbnb being a cheaper substitute to hotels. You have many vacationers, tourists that go to California, and Airbnb provides that cheaper option. Some of my students were asking, why is it that the price for... Um, hotels goes up. Let's take into account the cost of providing hotel services relative to Airbnb. So if we were to add the supply curve in this model, the marginal cost of providing hotel services, here we can have, even though we have S1 here, I'll just put S1 as well over here, equal to our marginal cost. And I'll, actually, I'll change this to S3. So we can keep these separate from each other. And providing hotel services are quite costly. Um, so 
we can take into account that the higher cost of providing this service uh, is the reason why the price is higher. So here we have S2 equal to our marginal costs. And that is the explanation as to why price is rising. So because of that higher price of P2, we see an increase in demand for Airbnb as the cheaper alternative holding price constant at P3. So this is what's discussed in the previous video. If we include the supply curve for Airbnb, we see that in the long run, the price for Airbnb, Airbnb will rise, but it will still be relatively cheaper than hotels. Just before we move on to looking at the affordable housing market in the state of California, let's just emphasize, oops, let me just uh, use this. Let me just emphasize by highlighting that these two models are illustrating the non-price determinant of demand or, uh, and that being substitutes. So here we see that as a result of an increase in price in graph A from P1 to P2, there's a decrease in the quantity demanded from Q1 to Q2. It's a movement along the demand curve from point A to point B that causes those that have reduced their quantity demand for hotels to switch over to the cheaper alternative of Airbnb. So the demand increases, holding price constant P3. And with P3 being constant, we see that at point D, the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied. That puts upward pressure on price. Price mechanism begins from P3 to P4. And in the long run, we end up with a higher price at P4 in this market for Airbnb. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to transplant graph B over here and begin to illustrate the affordable uh, housing market. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so here we are. I've moved Graph B over to my left. Here we have Graph B is the market for Airbnb in California. And now we've added Graph C, the market for affordable housing in California. So now this is gonna be an example of a non-price determinant of supply specifically competitive supply. So let's imagine that you are a, a property owner in California. And you own four properties. Let's say you have four. So let's imagine that you have one property offered as affordable housing. or one property offered for Airbnb. And let's say of the four, you have three properties offered for as an affordable housing option in the state of California. Three properties that are offered for affordable housing. Okay. So again, you have four properties, but one properties allocated towards Airbnb, and three properties are allocated towards uh, being an affordable housing option. So here we have one property, and here we have three properties. Again, in graph B, uh, due to Airbnb providing a cheaper alternative to hotels, as we saw, there was an increase in demand for Airbnb over time by vacationers and tourists that are uh, planning to spend some of their holiday in the state of California. So that was a non-price determinant uh, being the cheaper alternative, causing demand to shift out from D1 to D2, equal to our marginal benefit. And we're gonna hold price constant in the short run at P1. And as a result, we saw in the previous video how that leads to excess demand. So we're going from point A to point B. Here we have Q2. And at that point, we see that the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity being supplied. That excess demand puts upward pressure on price. The price mechanism takes hold. Price begins to rise from P1 to P2. And as a result of that increase in price, Right, we're seeing that price rise. 
As a result of that increase in price, according to the law of demand, there's a decrease in the quantity of demand along the demand curve from point B to point C. And there's an increase in the quantity supplied, according to the law of supply, from point A to point C until we reach a new equilibrium at that higher long run price of P2. And at P2, the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied equal each other at Q3. So that is what was discussed in the previous video. So here we have price rising and the quantity supplied increasing in response. Now, if I am a, a property owner and I have four properties, again, and I see that the price is rising for A and B and B units, and as a result of that higher price and the ability to turn over the apartment from one um, individual family that's staying to another, to another, each week, each month, I can see potentially the total revenue for me as a property owner is going to increase. So instead of offering three properties as affordable housing, I'm going to offer one property as affordable housing and transfer two additional properties over to Airbnb. So in total, I have three properties being offered and only one property being offered for affordable housing. So here we see that there's an incentive for property owners to reallocate their properties away from being an affordable housing option towards Airbnb due to the ability to generate more total revenue, perhaps more profit. So the quantity supplied is increasing over time from Q1 to Q3 in the long run. So perhaps that's my first apartment, my second, my third apartment being offered along point A to C. And this is happening throughout the state. So this is the market supply of apartments being offered for Airbnb, and it's increasing. The quantity of that supply is increasing due to the increase in price for Airbnb homestay units. So if I transfer two properties away from more affordable housing towards Airbnb, then the supply curve for affordable housing begins to decrease. So supply begins to decrease for affordable housing from S2 to S3 equal to our marginal costs of production three. So right there we see that that is a non-price determined supply, specifically competitive supply. That as a result of the price increasing from P1 to P2, there's an increase in the quantity supplied from Q1 to Q3 or from point A to point C, and that leads to a decrease in the supply of affordable housing from S2 to S3. So to emphasize that, to see that competitive supply, I'll just uh, mark it here with the marker. Here we see our supply curve. And here we see the shift in the supply curve decreasing. And so that's an example of competitive supply. Price rises supply decreases. So holding price constant, the quantity supply at P3 for affordable housing is reduced from Q4 to Q5. And here we see that at a price of P3, the quantity demanded for affordable housing is greater than the quantity supplied for affordable housing. So here again, we have a shortage, excess demand, and that will put upward pressure on price. Price will begin to rise for affordable housing from P3 to P4. And according to the law of demand, the quantity demand will decrease. Okay. So we're going from point D to point E, oops. And eventually in the long run to point F. So again, as price rises in the market for affordable housing from P3 to P4, the quantity demanded decreases from point D to point F or from Q4 
Q6. I got to write that in. Here we have Q6 over here. And the quantity supplied for affordable housing will begin to increase from E to F or from Q5 to Q6 until a new equilibrium is established at Q6 at a price of P4. So the, 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 the unfortunate thing that's occurring throughout the state of California is that we saw in graph A in the first video, hotels are relatively expensive. Graph B, Airbnb and B comes in as a cheaper alternative and demand for Airbnb is increasing, raising price that incentivizes property owners to allocate more of their properties towards Airbnb and less away from uh, individuals, residents, students in their own state uh, that could have used it as affordable housing. So the supply of affordable housing is decreasing because it's being reallocated towards Airbnb as an example. There's other factors, many other factors, but this is one of the factors. In all cases, we see that uh, the price for Airbnb is starting to rise and the price for affordable housing is beginning to rise. This is all negatively affecting um, the well-being of those that consume housing in California. They're experiencing a type of inflation on a necessity as a result of the scarcity of affordable housing just because of the property owners reallocating towards Airbnb. Um, and so what should happen, you know, an economist would say, well, the government needs to step in and provide more um, public affordable housing to build housing projects and provide it for low-income individuals and so forth to generate a cheaper alternative that can compete um, with the market. But that's a, a longer story to be discussed. So now let me just go ahead and analyze these two models as we would for a paper exam. And that's that'll be it. So in graph B, we're, measure, we're looking at the market for Airbnb in California. In graph C, we're looking at the market for affordable housing in California. In both graphs on the x-axis are measuring quantity and price on the y-axis. In um, both graphs, we see three downward sloping demand curves labeled D1, D2, D3, according to the law of demand. Um, and we must remember that demand is equal to our marginal benefit. In addition, we see three upward sloping supply curves labeled S1, S2, S3, upward sloping according to the law of supply, supply being equal to our marginal cost of providing uh, Airbnb units or affordable housing. In graph B, where D1 equals S1 at point A, an equilibrium price is established at P1 with an equilibrium quantity at Q1, where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. And because Airbnb units are a cheaper alternative to uh, hotels, there is an increase in demand over time for Airbnb units from D1 to D2. In the short run, price is held constant at P1, and at P1, we see that the quantity demanded at Q2 is greater than the quantity supplied at Q1. That puts upward pressure on price. Price begins to rise from P1 to P2. The price mechanism begins to take effect. The quantity demanded decreases from point B to point C, or from Q2 to Q3, while the quantity supplied begins to increase from Q1 to Q3 until we reach a long-run equilibrium at point C, with an equilibrium price at P2 and equilibrium quantity at Q3. As a result of the higher price for Airbnb units, it incentivizes property owners to reallocate their properties away from the affordable housing market towards the market for Airbnb. As a result, that leads to the supply curve shifting in from S2 to S3, which is an example of a non-price determinant of supply, specifically competitive supply. Graph C, we will first initially start at point D where S2 equals D1, I'm sorry, D3, with an equilibrium price at P3 and a quantity supply and demand at Q4. Due to property owners reallocating their property towards Airbnb, there's a decrease in the market supply of affordable housing from S2 to S3. Holding price constant at P3, we see that the quantity supplied at Q5 is less than the quantity demanded at Q4, thus there is a shortage. The shortage puts upward pressure on price. It increases from P3 to P4, causing the quantity supplied to increase from point E to F or from Q5 to Q6, while the quantity demand decreases from point D to E F or from Q4 to Q6 until we reach a long run equilibrium 
at point F where D3 equals F S3 with the price of P4 and the quantity of Q6. Again, we see that with competitive supply as the price increases, the quantity supplied increases and that causes the property owners to reallocate their property away from affordable housing towards Airbnb. So in the market for affordable housing, we see that the supply decreases. So there's a negative relationship where the price of um, Airbnb units rises that leads to a decrease in the supply of affordable housing. So the property owner having four properties, those properties compete against each other of what, what how they should be allocated. If I want to allocate more towards Airbnb, that means less affordable housing. If I want to allocate more towards affordable housing, that means less for Air, Airbnb units. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment those questions below and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.